Thank you for staying with us. This week, the federal government has taken steps to reduce the cost of living by removing value-added tax VAT on several essential items. Diesel, cooking gas, electric cars, and other goods are now exempt from VAT. A move aimed at providing relief amidst rising costs, this policy shift is a part of broader fiscal reforms to erase the economic burden on Nigerians. The government hopes that this will lead to a reduction in prices and improve access to these key resources. As they have with me, Akin Fantuke right here, and of course, uh, Olufebi Lossin, uh, still right here with me. And uh, very quickly, let's be very uh, straight with this. Uh, Akin Fantuke, let me just begin with you. Now, the federal government has reduced tax exemptions on key energy products and infrastructure, as well as fiscal incentives for the upstream and downstream oil and gas sector. Now, what's your standpoint and how sustainable is this initiative uh, going by the current state of things? No choice, uh, Mr. Tabo. Uh, let, let's face it. Okay. And then, of course, while I will not expect a lot of people to pat the president at the back <laughs> on, on account of the kind of groan mm. that we've had to go through all this while in the, in the past 17 months, which has gone yes. beyond 17 months uh, with the That's APC true. government, I think it's, it's, it's a welcome development. Okay. What do I think is going to uh, naturally, uh, oil and gas security um, is going to be boosted. Uh, mm. If you look at it from Kyoto, uh, if you look at this COP28, now COP29, uh, still talking about clean and affordable energy, you will agree with me that um, while I was in oil and gas, in about 2007, 2008, at the height of um, the regulation, or the, no, the regulation, were some of the things that we have been saying should come. Look at Yara Dua's time before mm. the reversal. And we've been tumbling from here, here to there. I didn't see any reason why we should, after diesel had been deregulated, mm. and it went with very good deregulation, uh, we should not now begin to tinker um, with cost of living, okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, at the height of it, you know what we are facing in the energy sector, you know, I mean, TIA, TIB, TIC, and all that. So I'm very, very happy that mm -hmm. um, a fellow channel accountant in, if you have, I hope you don't mind me if I mention that name. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes, Taiwo uh, is doing, Taiwo Yedele and his group, they are doing so nice. There are two things he has promised, harmonizing multiple taxation, yeah, yeah. and then streamlining multiple taxation. What I did not see, uh, I must say, maybe uh, the devil will be in the details, it's all about Kero. Uh, I mean, okay. Kero, is it because we are not producing Kero as such now? <laughs> oh, and well, I'm sure Dangote will come <laughs> with something. So what we also let, have... Let me hold your talk right there quickly. Now, only if I'm lost in quickly. Now, the VAT removal on key energy products are said to be a broader series of uh, investment-driven policy initiatives championed by the president. Now, how welcoming would this be for the common man out there? Not, not, not only investment-driven, it's also a major intervention when you talk about you know, how much... This will relieve the average Nigerian currently, you know, when you, when you, you know, consider the current economic situation. Because the average household today rely on cooking gas. Yeah. Today, our industry, because of, you know, the inadequacy in the power sector, mm. rely, you know, our small scale, you know, industries rely majorly on diesel. So this is going to be a major relief okay. for, you know, the small scale, even the major you know, industries in Nigeria. Well, you and, know, our uh, people are very fond of having this impression that when a particular policy does not directly affect, you know, their everyday to day activities, it doesn't look like the government is doing anything. No, it does. When you look at the average, for instance, if you, in a community, if you go to an industrial community, even in the neighborhood of Mushin in Lagos today, every five, every four or five industries there, rely on diesel for, for generators because the power is not readily available. Mm. Every household, not only in Lagos, even in, you know, other yeah, communities, communities across the country, yeah. now rely on cooking gas, you know, because it's affordability and access, mm. you know. So these are some of the policies that may have direct impact on the ordinary people okay. beyond some that are merely seen up, you know, as government rhetorics or okay. policies for the large you know, large scales or mm. for the mm. top echelon of the society. Class, okay. So, but I'm particularly interested in the policy as it affects the diesel, 
and cooking gas because these are going to have direct you know, impact on the prices of this product. And these are things that the average Nigerians you know, now rely on for their daily survival. All right, Fatunke, let's be very uh, swift with this. Uh, in a few uh, seconds, how sustainable would this be? And uh, do you see it, uh, you know, holding sway throughout uh, the term it will be planned? I do not see any reason why I should not. Okay. I don't see any reason why I should not, because um, gone are the days where, you know, we talk about palliatives, give them rice, give them sugar, give them this, and mm. all that ends up down the drain. Mm. And policy analysts and, uh, you know, developmental partners are also saying, can we begin to look for what will get down to the grassroots? Mm. This same government, like the previous government, and the one be before it were talking about social, you know, interventions. Social intervention is it with the credit money and all that? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it didn't get to them. Up till now, we are not sure. COVID intervention did not get to them. What is this? No? For instance, going to go to the manufacturers who are supposed, in my mind, to be the employers of labor. So should not go to the SMEs who are supposed to be the employers of labor. So uh, you don't need to wait for any pocket thing to come to you. You go to the market, go and do what you need to do, get more of those incentives. Mm -hmm. That is how it should be. But you know, Mr. Otabo, uh, when it comes to implementation of policies in Nigeria, this has nothing to do with whether Femi is an angel and I'm, um, and, uh, I'm a devil. It's just that when it just drops in there, you find people that want to try and corner the system. Okay. It should be such that, um, you know, uh, those who do the wrong thing should be punished. Right. And there will be people who are going to be doing the right thing. They should be punished. I want to see that scorecard. Right. Now, again, you are doing some things for me. You are looking at me and you are communicating with me. And I can understand you are communicating with me. You yeah. are calling my name, you are communicating with me. Yeah. But if you are looking at the other side and you feel you are communicating with me, I might feel that, uh, well... Deliberately be funny. Mm. Communication is one of the things that needs to be deepened with this government. Okay? okay? Yeah. So, the manufacturers, can we begin to look at some of those core cards? Can we look at sustainability impact? Can we begin to now then say to ourselves, okay, yeah, let's look at this sector. We just look at the oil and gas sector. Mm. Can we now look at food security? Can we even look at, you know... Okay, uh, more like expanding everything on a broader perspective. Deepening, All right. deepening, deepening, All deepening right. you know. Uh, <laughs> I, that's the only way that the mm. deaf, the mm. deaf will know mm. that when you are crowning ground nuts, <laughs> the, the blind is not uh, swallowing them.